Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to do my December reading wrap-up. So I read some books, a lot of books. Let me show you the books. Okay, so here's what I read in December. Uh, I'm going to count how many there are, because I don't know. Okay, so that's 18 books. So I'm going to try and be as brief as possible with each of these books as I take you through them. But I do want to take the time to talk quickly about each of these books and to tell you what my ratings for them were. So... We'll get started with Different Seasons by Stephen King. So this is four novellas in one collection. It's uh, Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption, Apt Pupil, The Body and The Breathing Method. And three of those four actually got turned into films as well. And I read this as I was away in Liverpool and kind of on my way back as well. And I did really enjoy it. I think Apt Pupil in this was my favourite of the stories. But overall, I still thought this was kind of a great little collection. And I gave it four out of five stars. Speaking of Stephen King, I also read From a Buick 8. And this is one of his newer books. It's about this police troop that find this haunted Buick 8. And, uh... Basically what happens is there's a guy who parks this car and asks a parking attendant to keep an eye on it and then this guy just disappears and then throughout the years that follow this Buick 8 causes all kinds of spooky shenanigans to happen in and around the police barracks. Now this is one of King's more recent books and it wasn't his best but it was still a decent enough read and it flew by and I think I gave this three and a half or four stars. Both of these two books actually and a number of these other books as well have got reviews that I've filmed. I may not have posted them yet, but there will be reviews of them at some point on my channel. I've kind of got too many reviews coming up, so I'm going to have to stagger them, and some of these, the reviews might not even be out for a couple months, but keep your eyes peeled if you want to know more. After that, I fancied a bit of a break from Stephen King, so I went for 100 Prized Poems, 25 Years of the Forward Books, and this was edited by William Seacart. It's basically a collection of contemporary poetry. The Forward Books prizes are some contemporary poetry prizes, and they pick out their, you know, their favourite poem of the year, their favourite collection of the year, that kind of stuff. And this gathers 25 years worth of the winners. And I've read a number of these books that are from the Forward Books prizes, but this this is the only one I think so far that covers such a, a wide variety of poetry in such a, a you know a prolonged period of time as well and I gave this one four out of five as well it's I've read a lot of decent books after that came George R R Martin dying of the light and this was a buddy read with Todd the librarian so we both read it at the same time both posted reviews to our channels and we both kind of said the same thing we neither of us particularly liked it this was Todd's first George R R Martin book whereas I'm more familiar with his work but I didn't think too much of it either. It was his first novel and you could kind of tell that. I think he was still finding himself as an author. And it was kind of like a hardcore sci-fi novel except not as good as a hardcore sci-fi novel. I feel like there, were, there was a lot of world building going on. But in terms of the plot and the characters there wasn't much there. And it wasn't particularly enjoyable. I still gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I thought it was alright, you know. There wasn't anything wrong with it, it just wasn't a good book. Next up we have A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, and I have the version that is illustrated by Jim Kay. Unfortunately, I didn't like this too much. Um, I think it's kind of one of those that's been overhyped by people, and I've heard so many people say so many great things about it, and I thought it was not only predictable, but I thought Connor, the main character in it, was kind of unlikable. I, I didn't particularly care about the fact that his mum had cancer. Sorry, Connor. Whenever I read a book like that, I always feel as though the authors just put that in there to, you know, to try and increase the tension, I guess. And I know this is created based on the original idea of somebody who did actually die of cancer, but I just didn't feel it was very well executed. And I can't give a story a high rating because of the story behind the story. And that's what happened here. The story behind the story was better than this book itself. So next up on this list is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn and this is a short story, it's not even a novella really and it was first published as part of an anthology that George R.R. R. Martin pulled together and I've read Gone Girl in the past and I didn't think much of it. Again, I think I had the same problem with Patrick Ness that it had been overhyped to the point at which when 
I read it, I was expecting something, you know, really good, mind-blowing, and, and it just wasn't that for me. The Grown Up, though, I really enjoyed this short story, and I, I have posted a full review of this on my channel, which people seem to like my review of it as well. I, I, you know, I thought there was a lot to think about here, and there was some great writing as well. You get thrown straight in at the start into this main character, too, and I gave this a 4 out of 5, but in hindsight, I think I should have given it a 4.5. This was a really strong short story and I liked the ending as well which some people didn't. Then we have The Moving Finger by Agatha Christie so I picked this up after seeing Hannah Tay review the Halloween party on her channel and it just really got me in the mood for reading some more Agatha Christie and I picked this one up at random. I always have Agatha Christie books on my TBR shelves because I'm trying to go through all of them. This is a Miss Marple book. I picked it up and straight away there was a character with Dane in the name. I can't remember. I think it was Mrs. Dane Mrs. Dane Colthrop, I think. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. It's Agatha Christie. It's hard not to enjoy Agatha Christie. I gave it a 4 out of 5. It was a, a solid Miss Marple mystery. It was kind of funny because she didn't really appear in, in it until right at the end. About this far of the way through the book, like this far from the end, I left a note being like, oh, look who bloody turned up. Look who decided to show her face. But... It didn't suffer for the fact that she wasn't in it, and so, uh, yeah, it was great. I really enjoyed it. After that, I went for a short one, which is You Should Have Left by Daniel Kaleman. And this was actually given to me by Annabel Gaskell, who was one of the members of the Young Writer of the Year Award shadow panel, which I also sat on. And we met up in person. She gave me this book. I took it home and read it. And it was very creepy, and it was very interestingly written. It was quite experimental. I think it's had fairly mixed reviews from what I saw on Goodreads, but I thought it was great. And again, it was because of the experimental nature of it. I thought it was really interesting what Kaleman did with this short story, but I don't want to tell you too much, because I think you should go and read this. And again, I gave this a four or a five. I don't know at this point. After this, we have The Everyday Poet, Poems to Live By, and this is edited by Deborah Ulmer. And Deborah Ulmer also goes by the moniker of the emergency poet, so her thing is that she dresses up as a doctor and she'll go to festivals and things like this and prescribe poems to people. And I thought that was a great concept. She's already written one book that brings together a bunch of poems basically that are along that concept and this one this is poems to live by and so the idea is there are poems about lots of different areas of our day-to-day -day lives from nature to more contemporary issues I guess and uh, this is a really nice one just in terms of, of the way the book is printed it's printed by Michael O'Mara books and it's this lovely little hardback and yeah I like this as well I think this is another four out of five I think you can see a theme coming here after that I wanted to go back to Agatha Christie so I picked up Miss Marple's final cases as you can tell I'm reading these books out of order I just pick them up as and when I fancy them and this one was stunning I couldn't couldn't think of a single way to improve this and um, the good thing is is that you don't need to read these in order so this would actually make a really good introduction even if you're new to Miss Marple I gave this one five out of five stars it was just incredible about eight different stories including one that was actually told by Miss Marple so her kind of tone of voice comes across in that. Then after that I moved on to this really short and sweet one this is We Should All Be Feminist by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I picked this up at the Liverpool Tate when we went there for our little trip away and it's literally the transcript almost of a TED talk that she gave and I, I've, I found myself while I did agree with most of the things that she was saying it was all very anecdotal and it didn't really use much kind of scientific, you know, studies or um, what's the word that I want? It didn't use many facts or stats or that kind of things. You know, I think it's great that books like this do exist, but I think it could have been improved upon, certainly, and I just gave it a 3.5. Then we have Dust Ship Glory by Elaine M. Will. So this tells the story of Tom Sukanen, who was a Finnish-Canadian immigrant who was building an ark, basically, and everybody thought he was going crazy, and he thought that they were the crazy ones, to the point where they started to doubt their own sanity, almost. This is based on a true story. It's also based on a novel of the same name, Dust Ship Glory. The art's great in this. I was actually sent a copy of this for free by the author. She spoke at one of my writing workshops in the past. And I really enjoyed this. I gave this a 5 out of 5. And that's not just because I know her. I thought it was fantastic. And uh, I even said in my review of this that I think it will be taught in schools. Or it should be taught in schools. Then I went into childlike mode. I read The Story of Science Book 1. Which is a ladybird book. And uh, it was actually really interesting. Although I did say it ended on a cliffhanger. Because it 
ended, I think, where was it? Was it Galileo that it ended? Galileo, yeah. So it ended on Galileo and then the rest of it's continued in book two and I don't have book two. But I did pick this up from a charity shop and I just thought it was a really sort of sweet little book and it was quite an enjoyable little read actually. Even uh, today it kind of holds up to the test of time I think and I did learn the odd thing. I guess we'll give this a 3.5 out of 5 though because it wasn't mind blowing or anything like that. It was just a pleasant little distraction. Then on the Ladybird theme, this isn't actually Ladybird, but it's there have been some modern remakes of the Ladybird books, and this is the modern remake of the Enid Blyton books. So there are a whole series of these. This one here is Five on Brexit Island, and it basically takes Enid Blyton's famous five books, but retells them in a modern setting. So in this, they all head off to Kirin Island, and uh, Kirin Island de declares independence from Britain, basically as a result of the Brexit referendum. And there's some great stuff in here in terms of lots of political in-jokes and all that kind of stuff and if you've ever read Enid Blyton as well it's very true to her style of writing this made me laugh a lot um it is satire and you might not get all of it if you're not British or if you haven't been paying attention to all of the Brexit stuff but I really enjoyed it I gave it a four out of five stars thinking about it now I should have given it a 4.5 I'm gonna check out the other books in the Enid Blyton five books series and yeah it was great it was fun then we get the big one. So this is what I read over Christmas while I was at my mum's house. So basically every time I head away from home for a prolonged period of time, I try and take a really long book with me and try and finish it. So this is what I read over Christmas. This is Four Past Midnight by Stephen King. It's got, again, like different seasons, it's got four different novellas in it. And those novellas are The Langoliers, Secret Window, Secret Garden, The Library Policeman, and The Sun Dog. And The Langoliers was incredible. The rest of them didn't quite live up to that standard, so overall I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 stars, but The Langoliers itself was a 5 star read, and this is definitely worth reading for that story alone. And there's also a full review coming for this that ended up being 30 minutes long. Keep your eyes peeled for that one. Almost at the end, we've got three more books to go. So this one here is A Murder to Die For by Stephen Colgan. Stephen Colgan's actually a local author to me. He's based in High Wycombe. I uh, pledged to support this book through Unbound, his publisher, which is basically like Kickstarter, but for books. So if an author gets enough pre-orders or pledges or whatever you want to call them, the book goes into production. So my name actually features towards the end of this book as one of the supporters. And it features alongside people like Jimmy Carr and Sandy Toxvig, who are like celebrities, which is cool. As well as people like Amanda de Grey, who lives near me in High Wycombe, and whose name will mean absolutely nothing to anybody who's watching this. <laughs> this is great, though. It kind of takes the piss out of cosy detective novels while simultaneously being one. And the whole storyline focuses on this kind of fictional female detective story writer. She's called Agnes Crabb. You may see some sort of similarities with Agatha Christie. Basically her work is discovered after her death. She goes on to become kind of a national treasure. Her books are adapted into TV shows and all that kind of stuff. And the small English village of Naisley has a once yearly Agnes Crabb festival. And basically this story follows what happens at that festival, but somebody gets murdered. And that's kind of the cool thing about it in that it takes the piss out of detective mystery novels while simultaneously being one. So it is very funny, very humorous, but at the same time there is this detective novel plot that you can follow if you so desire and, you know, try to guess who did it. And this for me was a solid 5 out of 5 stars. I'm definitely glad that I kind of pledged some money in advance to get my copy of this. And uh, yeah, I encourage you to check it out in 2018 when it's released, although it's 2018 now, so in a soon when it comes out. And then I just have two little ones to end the year on. So the first is, why does my cat squeeze into boxes? And this is by, who is it by? This is by Michael Powell, and it's just 45 questions about owning a cat and, and the answers to them. I mean, I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5, I guess. I mean... There's, there's not much more than you can say about that. It, it, it made this promise on the cover and it delivered it and it took me less than a day to read it. I learned a few bits about owning a cat, but most of it is kind of common sense. I'm actually currently reading this one at the moment as well, which is called Cats Behaving Badly. 
I don't know why I've been reading non-fiction books about cats recently. And finally, I actually read all of this on New Year's Eve, and this is the Forward Book of Poetry 2018. So I've already mentioned one of the previous Forward Books of Poetry things. This is basically just 2018's award winners, shortlisted poems, and all that kind of thing. I thought it was great, actually, because it gives you this kind of interesting cross-section into what's being published at the moment and to, into what contemporary poets are writing about. It wasn't as good as the previous one that I mentioned that spanned the 25 years, and so for that and that alone, I'm going to give it 3.5 out of 5 stars, but overall, still worth reading, really. I mean, I got this for free, so I can't complain. So, okay, so those are all the books that I read in December. Apologies if I kind of rushed through them. I just didn't want this video to be like an hour long, so I tried to cover the books as much as I could, as quickly as I could. Feel free to leave a comment below to let me know if you've read any of these books or if you'd like to read any of them. And in the meantime, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd mean a lot to me. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye.